Hey guys, good evening. This is Carlos G over here at JR Capital. Happy Labor Day Monday. Uh, markets were closed uh, for the United States and Canada. So I hope everyone enjoyed their day off. Hope everyone had a great weekend. And I think it's time to get back to work, guys. We definitely had uh, the London session pass us. Asian session pass us. Right in the middle of an Asian session. We're about two hours away from the RBA rate statement, which we're looking at right now. Uh, right now it's at 1.5%. At 12.30 in about two hours, we'll have that going on. And we are not expecting a rate cut at all. Uh, definitely, we're expecting a little more dovish language, as we're expecting that a rate cut down the line will happen, as data around the world and uh, everyone's eyes on the Federal Reserve keeps central banks' eyes peeled. So, with that being said, I just want to go over a couple of things for the week. Uh, today, we had a services PMI that beat expectations, 52.9 over 49.1, which shot up the pound dollar. I want to go ahead and bring that up here. As you can see here on the pound dollar, I'm going to bring up here a 30 minute chart. Shut up right down here about 60 pips and drop right back down to the range area of around 133 to 133.30. So a 30 pip range after the jump of about oh 60 pips. We have a little bit of a sell-off of the pound back to our ranging average here on the on the 30 minute chart. On the pound dollar, we're looking at the British, British economy looks like it won't change in regards to Brexit. But a lot of a lot of things have not changed. There hasn't been a vote or an actual uh, acceleration or execution of the actual Brexit removing from the Euro, for the European Union. The story isn't over. We are getting better retail numbers. We're definitely better betting, getting better PMIs across the board and inflationary data. But I don't think nothing has anything has changed. I do believe the pound dollar still has its way to go to the downside, just a, quite a bit. If you look at a daily chart, a daily chart you want to take with a grain of salt, due to the Brexit big drop here of about oh, I don't know from 148 to 133. But again, I still have a little bit of a bearish sentiment on pound dollar for the long term. I wouldn't want to jump on the pair as of yet. Uh, as of right now, pound dollar is up about 12 pips on the session. So the services PMI did beat expectations. As for tomorrow, meaning two hours from now, we have the cash statement which we went over. Tomorrow, big news at 10 in the morning, we have the ISM numbers, manufa manufacture, non manufacturing PMI, meaning services PMI. We want to make sure that that beats expectations if we're going to be long on the dollar. That should accelerate any kind of talk of a bullish talk in regards to cut, uh, increasing interest rates in a couple of weeks when the FOMC meets. Uh, we did had a miss on manufacturing PMI, but we're not very much a manufacturing economy anymore. We are expecting uh, to see the services PMI be a bigger move if there's a miss for the dollar as we do believe that they're a little bit overbought on the dollar all around since the NFP didn't hit expectations, wasn't terrible, it was bearish, but it wasn't a, a, a contraction of jobs. It was still an increase, just not meeting expectations. And for the most part, August does not usually meet expectations for NFP. But again, that's just something that we need to keep an eye on in general uh, regarding any kind of United States data in regards to jobs, inflationary data, or GDP, as that can cause a bit of a movement in the dollar pre-Federal Reserve moves. But also I want to keep in mind that September, we're still a little bit of a vacationary period. We're getting low volume across the board. We're not getting huge moves. So that's something that you want to consider is that the volume shrinks, spreads may tend to widen a bit. Since there's not much movement, volatility has gone a little bit down. 
well, we're not getting much volatility. Equities are driving up, but not as much as you would believe. It's still September. I wouldn't expect a lot of movement. So we definitely need to be careful and look for the longer term. We have been getting hit a little bit on a rough patch. I believe that our, our stop losses have been a little too tight than usual. I prefer it to us to have a wider stop loss. Still keep the 1% but not get knocked out so quickly due to short-term volatility on certain pairs. Uh, pairs being dollar yen or euro dollar. So I want to go ahead and adjust our strategy. I want to go ahead and adjust the strategy accordingly. Increase the white of the stop losses. Increase the width of our targets. And still keep the 1%. If you look on our website here. Let me go and bring that up. If you have any questions on how to submit that 1% on your, on your change. In regards to wanting to go ahead and still have the same risk profile. 1% but still widen the stop loss. I'm going to go and show you that here. We're going to go to member exclusive content. Oh, here we go. We're going to go to member content. We're going to go to tools. And now I want to go ahead and say here on a euro dollar, I'm just going to go ahead and put 110. I want to go a sell position. I'm going to do a 10K lot. This is an example. Oops, I'm on the wrong one. Position size calculator. Let's do this again. Do a count balance of 10,000. We're going to risk 1%. Stop loss and pips. We're going to do 150 this time, just as an exa example. It's still $100 risk on a 10,000. This is 1%. Position size is going to be 6,666. And our standard lot's 0.67 or 0.7 if it rounds up. So no matter what the stop loss, you're still going to have the stop, the 1% risk of $100. It's just the change of units. Now, once we start rallying in our favor, when we start rallying in our favor, we're going to add positions. So we'll add that position to 2% as an example, you get $200 as a cash risk. And we always want to do two to one. So 3%, so on and so forth, and we increase it accordingly. So once you start seeing more of our positions coming in, I want to go ahead and do more of a swing to mitigate against these big moves. As you know, volatility hasn't hit, but we had a lot of central bank movement. I don't want this to, kill, to hit us ahead of time with our technical analysis and our uh, fundamental analysis. But fundamentals, for the most part, are out the window since central banks have kind of taken over the fact of they're going to ma manage this market accordingly. So just I want the members to know that once we send these, uh, these stop loss, wide stop losses and these wide targets, I want you guys to know that the reason we're doing this is to mitigate any kind of overtrading or mitigate any kind of stopping out immediately of any trades. Let's go to Wednesday here. Uh, we're going to have manufacturing production. We're going to have the Bank of Canada rate statement at 10 in the morning. Not expecting any kind of rate cut, not expecting any kind of moves. We're just going to keep an eye on it. We're going to have GDP on the Japanese at 7.50 p.m. We're going to have trade balance from the Aussies at 9.30. So Wednesday, we're going to have a little bit of a busy day. Thursday, ECB press conference. I don't expect any kind of movement in regards to more bond buying or anything else like that. I think the Euros, the, the European Union is going to stick the same with what they got. Uh, minimum bid rate, we're still at 0%. Nothing's going to change. I, don't, I doubt any kind of negative interest rate policies will be taking place as bonds have been still dropping in, in this market. Friday, we have Canadian unemployment. Thursday, we have unemployment. Again, Eurogroup meetings all day. So keep an eye on the Euro end of the week, uh, Thursday and Friday. But again, we have a holiday short week. Expect not huge, not big moves across the board. Uh, just something in general that I want to keep an eye on. There's a couple of pairs. Aussie Yen, I'm keeping an eye on. We just sent a signal on it. I am short on Aussie Yen ahead of the RBA statement. I do believe we're going to get more of a risk off on, the, uh, on equities. And as you know, equities kind of correlate with Aussie in general. I'll go ahead and show you. With SPX, SPX being the S&P 500, I'm going to go look at it daily. And you're going to see how the S&P has rose against the Aussie dollar. Now, this is a daily chart. Let me go ahead and bring up a weekly. It's a little bit of an inverse, meaning as high as the, uh, the Japanese yen has gone up against, I mean, the Australian dollar has, has risen against the Japanese yen 55%. I mean, uh, the S&P. You have the, Jap the Aussie going down. Now, this isn't a gospel. 
usually will have a little bit of a correlation in regards to equities and equities and uh, excuse me the Aussie so as you can see here we have a little bit of a oh, little bit of a combination here you see kind of a kind of a correlation here but we broke away as S&P's started lifting off off the 13th 2013 and then we had more of the rate cuts from the Aussies in general and the more rate cuts they have the more central bank policies we had more lower uh, inflation deflationary period deflationary environment uh, globally we had to cut rates to, to combat that the s p kind of moved up against it so this is not exactly the best example but for the most part they are correlated and since 2013 they have well 2013 kind of stopped but in a daily chart we do see a bearish trend oh this is on a weekly we're gonna look at a daily daily again lower highs lower lows right now we're trading at 79.02 we just broke 79 we uh shorted right around 78.90 expecting it to retrace back to uh, around August 30th around 77 maybe a little less here but we don't think these gains will hold I'm also looking at US dollar here US dollar I don't expect the Federal Reserve to hike rates in September I do believe they're gonna hold the environment is not perfect maybe December 25 basis points just like we had last year so with that we've had a lot of rhetoric meaning even after NFP we had a little bit of a drop and then we had a rise rise the drop rise and drop stopping out traders both ways if they got hit so we had a reversal on a reversal on another reversal so dollar has been pretty tricky looking at a four-hour chart still bearish looking at a daily chart still bearish again I mean 104 seems to be kind of the resistance mark on a four hour chart around 104.50 we hit 104 140 29 and came back down just quite a bit on a four hour uh, 104 seems to be like the short term resistance we look like we could retrace back to around 102 102.50 on an hourly chart still a little more bullish but long-term swing that we're looking at as a daily we're still looking at lower lows and lower highs so we're looking at the short dollar yen just looking for a good entry I want to see if we can hit back at 104 and if that breaks that resistance mark before we start pulling the trigger we're all 50 pips away um, the ISM service sector tomorrow should give us a little bit of a leeway if we miss then I want to go ahead and short dollar yen if we hit, then I want to stay away because we don't know if that's going to be the catalyst of that services PMI to get us over the hump where the Fed may just uh, cut rate, I mean, excuse me, uh, increase interest rates by 25 basis points into September meeting in a couple of weeks since the jobs uh, number has been the big catalyst, not GDP or any other uh, indicator, uh, any kind of economic indicator. So those are what we're looking for right now. Those are the couple of charts I'm looking at. Dollar yen, Aussie dollar, and also Euro dollar. I want to keep in mind, I want to see how the Euro dollar affects, is affected with the Euro group meetings. I don't see any kind of uh, stimulus or added uh, bond buying. So that would push the Euro up. But looking at a four hour chart, we're still looking at a bearish move on a daily chart still looking at a bearish move hourly chart still looking at a bearish move so I don't want to go against the grain here and just buy euro against the dollar just because we think we're gonna go ahead they're not gonna go ahead and buy more bonds the trend says one thing fundamentally I'm not set on buying euro so I want to just keep that on the watch list not by buying another thing I want to look at too is dollar Canadian dollar against oil we had a little bit of a news report regarding OPEC and that brought, dragged down the cat Canadian dollar stronger against the dollar. We're at 29.24. We're about 131 beforehand. Uh, this is an hourly chart. This was about a couple of hours ago. So we had a nice little drop. But across the board, uh, the Canadians, as you know, kind of correlates with WTI. So I was reading a chart the other day, I mean, earlier today. 
and it was regarding U.S. crude and September next to November is the worst month for crude oil prices. Crude oil right now is down about 5% in an hourly. Dollar Canadian dollar is about uh, slightly above 0.12%. So looking at this, the lower we go, dollar Canadian dollar, you can see the inverse. The dollar gets stronger against the Canadian dollar when the oil goes lower. We're around about 8%. We know this is one of our favorite correlation plays long term. I just want to see where oil goes. If we can get a stronger dollar reading, especially with the ISM, then we're going to go ahead and short oil. And meaning our Forex short oil play would be to long dollar Canadian dollar. Now with the dollar, we'll be short some and long another. It's all about what's stronger. When it comes to when it comes to actual strength indicators, when it comes to which pairs are stronger against what, I like to compare dollar Canadian dollar, dollar yen, Aussie dollar, and euro dollar, and pound dollar. So we have a couple of movements here, a couple of charts, and across the board, Aussie dollar is up. Across the board, Next one will be pound dollar up. And this is just a daily chart. And then we have pound dollar down. We also have dollar Canadian dollar down. So the dollar has been stronger against everything except the Aussie dollar. Now, we know that Aussie dollar, we compared it against the S&P. Definitely have a little bit of a correlation here, about a couple of basis points. In between. So the S&P right around 2179. Aussie dollar is up around 13% on the daily. Nice little correlation here. Didn't show on the daily chart, on the other daily chart that we had, but looking at this perspective, we can kind of see what's the strength. Aussie's gaining a little strength on the daily. I want to take a look at a four hour. Now we're getting a little bit of a better move. Dollar yen up on a four hour. Looking at pound, dollar, Canadian dollar, no, treading water down a little bit. But as you can see here, dollar, Canadian, dollar, yen is down on the day, on the four hour. We have S&P flat on a four hour. And we have euro dollar up. So a little bit of dollar weakness, of course, as we look longer stretch of period. And it's all based on the Fed. As you can see, yen has been stronger. Anything against dollar has been up. But again, things have changed due to the Fed. Everything is on hold, especially with lower volatility. We're still waiting to see. The lower the volatility, the lower the volume. Harder to gauge. Harder to see where we're going to play. I kind of equate this time to more of the holidays, December, Christmas time. It's very difficult to kind of get a gauge in the market when you're not getting movement. So we just don't want to jump in here and there. Uh, we have our trade open is Aussie yen. I want to check it out one more time and spot check it. And we have a wide stop loss like we spoke about. And if it rallies our way, we're going to go ahead and add a position. And it's around 78.96. So we're down a couple of pips. Not, not really too worried. We're not going to stare at it all day or anything. But again, those are the things we're looking for. We went ahead and added some broker recommendations on the website. I want you guys to check that out when you get, when you get a chance. Just click here on broker recommendations. Uh, one of my great interns went ahead and typed this up. Just want to make sure that you guys know that do your own research, see where brokers meet your needs and comfort in regards to fees and spreads. No compensation has been given by any broker regarding these recommendations. Uh, so none of these brokers have paid uh, the, the company to post this on our site. So. Uh, I just want you guys to look at it and see what you like. And uh, I get that question all the time. Which is the best broker here and there? Uh, what, you, what do you recommend? Uh, I personally use uh, interactive brokers for my trading. And, uh, you know, I want to go ahead and give everyone their own taste of what they want to use as best, international and domestic, uh, domestic in the United States. So just take a look at that part of the website. We also got a new, new article wrote up by uh, my VP of trading. Post NFP markings in the upcoming week. Read it at your own leisure. 
And we're going to go ahead and leave it at that. Uh, short week this week. We got four days. We got the uh, we got the PMI tomorrow, services PMI. We also have the Australian uh, Royal Bank of Australia uh, uh, rate statement tonight. We'll take a look at that. And if anything changes, we'll go ahead and email you guys and share something on Twitter. Make sure to follow us at JR Capital. Make sure to follow us at Instagram at JR Capital. Short week, week disguise. Let's go ahead and get what we got to get. And uh, let's make these pips, guys. Have a great day, and uh, thanks for joining me again.